Okay? Let's start from the beginning. I'm going to read and translate each word of the Pedic from the beginning. And when I get to the end, we're going to slow down. Okay? Lam Nateach, for the one organizing the choir. Beneginais, who's singing songs. Mizmoir Shir, right? Mizma means he's singing with a musical, musical instrument, and Shir means he's singing with his mouth. Elikim, the godliness of concealment. Yochaneinu will be benevolent. V'yivarcheinu, and he will bless us. And more than both of those two, Yod Ponov, he's going to give us his face, his countenance. Itanu, that we should be with him and he should be with us. Sela for all eternity. Ladaz ba'odet darkecha, that the ways of Hashem, which means both the pathways that we call the ten spheres, and even hadi'eni noz darkecha, the pathways of the thirteen attributes of mercy, will be known ba'odets in this world. Bechol goyim, and among all the nations, Yeshua Secha, Hashem's salvation will be visible, evident, revealed, seen. And as a consequence of this, Yeducham Malakim, all the nations of the world, submit, acknowledge, Elihim, Yeducham Mkulam. And all the nations of the world, as a collective, as a unity, as an integrated one, submit to HaKadosh Baruch. This is the first part of the Pedic. Number two, Yismichu V'yiran Nalu'umim. The nations who are the most sensitive will rejoice and sing. Because they see that Hashem draws his Amem, even the lowest nations, with righteousness and fairness. Ulu'umim, and the nations that are considered more perfect. Ba'aretz in this world. Tanchem, he will govern and he will lead and he will direct. Selah for all eternity. Yiducham kim, and therefore the nations will again submit to Hashem. Yiduch Amim Kulim, the nation will submit Hashem as a collective, as a unit. So the first part of the Pedic is Goyim acknowledging how it was worthwhile for Jews to stick with the Abishta for thousands of years. And the second part of the Pedic is the Goyim acknowledging how the Abishta is righteous even to them, or also to them. And then comes the Bracha. This is the end of the Pedic, and this is where we're holding. Eretz, the earth, Nasna Yivulo, will give us her bounty. Eretz, the earth. Nasna will give Lashon Nekeva in feminine. The earth is considered feminine. Yuvula her bounty. I told this to you last week that it says in Rishonim, I forgot which, that the word Yuvul, the word Tvua, which are Hebrew words that denote a harvest of grain specifically, is from the word Boy or Bia, to bring home. Yuvul, what you, what you take home. Eres, the earth, Nasna will give us Yuvula her bounty that we're able to take. This is a bracha. The end of this Pedic is a bracha. The last two psukim of this Pedic is a blessing. And if you remember last week's class, I spoke to you about Hida and Halal and bracha. Bracha means the ideas from Hashem that come to us that we can internalize. Right? Hida means we accept. Hal means we see the light of it and we praise it. Bracha means we're able to take it in. And that's the earth. Nasna will give us Yevula, her bounty, as a bracha. We'll be able to take it in. So simply speaking, it means that the earth will give us food. I think about this from time to time. This is, when I was making my coffee this morning, it crossed my mind. One of the big issues that people worry about is, are we going to run out of air? Are we going to run out of water? Are we going to run out of food? Which really is ironically, are we going to run out of carbon? On the one hand, we're worried about the fact that there's too much carbon. On the other hand, we're worried about, listen, nothing grows if there's no carbon, right? But there's good carbon and there's bad carbon. I'm not a maven in the different kinds of carbon, right? The world is now feeding 7 billion people. 40 years ago, or 30 years, the world was feeding almost half that. How many people can the world continue to feed without it taking away from, from nature, from animals, and, from, and so on and so forth? And the answer to that question on a das level, on an earth level, has to do with technology. There is technology now, today, as we speak, to feed twice as many people. 15 billion people, and the world won't say boo. <laughs> the earth gives out her bounty. The Abishter gave when, when, when human beings, using science and technology, figure out ways of preserving water and preserving air and distributing air and distributing water, bringing it to places where there isn't, and finding ways of using the earth in a renewable way, in a sustainable way, right, without denuding it, without making the earth into a desert. That's a bracha from the Abishter. <laughs> Yes, 
people use their seichel and use their midas and use their technology and maybe they say I don't need God that can be my own God they can say what they wish but that's the bracha of Nebishter and that's this bracha Eretz Nasli Yivula the earth gives out her bounty in a way that is enough for everybody and then it says uh, wait but I want to say something else Eretz Nasli Yivula I just translated it very literally and very physically that the Mashiach comes there's a bracha the earth gives out her her, pros- her possibility to provide life and to provide f- food and even to provide pleasure. You know, Chassidus says, bread is for nourishment, fruit is for f- pleasure. The earth doesn't just give us enough to keep us alive, the earth gives us enough to have tainu, pleasure, to enjoy the Abish, this world. But there's another taich. Eretz, Nasna Yavula, means this. The word Eretz means earth, right? But the word Adama also means earth. Right? And the word Tevel also means earth. The word Eretz has the same Shoyrish as the word Rotsen. Will. And it says in Madrash Chazal, the Rebbe brings it in so many of his Sikhs and his Maimonim. Eretz she Rotsasa, the earth is running through the will of Hashem. So Eretz Nosna Yuvula means on a Hasidic level, besides for the simple Taich, on a Hasidic level, Eretz Nosna Yuvula means that the earth gives us her bounty her sense of desire, that's what it means. The earth gives out to us its want for the Eibishter. So in addition to giving us food, it gives us, the earth gives out her rotsen, her will to be connected to Hashem and to serve Hashem, and that's another bracha. It's a more meaningful bracha, it's a deeper bracha. Not only does the earth give us food and sits there quietly, but the earth gives out her rotsen, her will to serve Hashem. And then we finish. Yevarcheinu Elohim Eloheinu. The Elohim gives us a bracha. Elohim, as you know, means the godliness of concealment. And as I've emphasized in all of these classes, that the godliness of concealment doesn't mean bad. It means the level of godliness which is above revelation. This is Elohim which is higher than Hashem. So here you have an unbelievable statement. Yevarcheinu Elohim. Eloheinu. Which means, Helem Atzmi. The, le- the idea that God is hidden from us gives us a bracha that he becomes ours. What does the word elikim and the word elikenu? It's night and day. Elikim means the godliness of concealment. Elikenu means my personal God. My personal God. Jews say this all the time. Elikenu velikei senu, My God, our God, the God of our fathers. Right? Who gave us the right to say mine? My God. It's in Tanya chapter 47. Avram Avinu said Elikeni, my God. Because he gave his life away for Elikeni. What did we do? <laughs> We're fair weather Jews. You know, life is good. It's beautiful weather. The air conditioning actually works. <laughs> yeah, we're all watered and fed and clothed and comfortable. And we even have the pleasure of being able to be kvetches a whole day and a whole night. Yeah? How do we have the chutzpah to say, my God, Elikeinu, my God? And I told this to you earlier in this sequence, that you could argue, and you have to understand, Sheikh's going to come, the big, one of the big Chidush is going to be all the laws of the Goyim. The Goyim are going to have to learn how to keep Torah, their Torah, from us, or from our Rabbon, and from our G'deli Yisrael. Right? Will the Goyim be able to say, Elikai, my God? Or it would only be a lakim. To say, my God, you have to earn it. So al Rebbe asks in Tanya, Avram Avinu earned it. What about the rest of us? Every Jew says, my God, every minute of every day. We don't say a lakim. Say a lakinu. It's mine. So the al Rebbe says, come on, you Avram. He says, Avram Avinu earned it. We inherited it. A Yid says, my God, not because he has a right to. Not because he's worked so hard or she's worked so hard to personalize God for themselves that they can honestly say, my God. There's only one God, by the way. <laughs> There's only one God. <laughs> the only one. But what right do I have to say he's mine? He's everybody's. But when I say he's mine, that means I said I'm his. Avraham Avinu had that right. We inherited it. That's the gift of being a Yid. But Goyim don't have that right. Hashem didn't give it to them. Hashem gave them seven mitzvahs. But if a Goyim is going to say a Lekenu, he's going to have to earn it. 
in my imagining, I told this to you in the very first class that I gave you on this capital, that Goyim are going to have their own Yom Kippur. I don't know when it'll be. It's not going to be the same as ours. In my fantasy, in my fantasy, it's all it is, in my fantasy, that a whole year, they're never going to say Yudkei Vavkei, never. Havaya Yudkei Vavkei, they'll never say. But they'll say Elikim. And when they're holiest days, they'll say Elikeinu. He's mine. I have a personal relationship with him. I'm his and he's mine. So this is the Verkeinu Elikim Elikeinu, the greatest bracha that the Eivisha could give us as that the Eivish that is ours. Yerachenu Elikim, the godliness of concealment. Now the way I'm explaining it to you, the godliness of concealment is higher than the godliness of revelation. Right? Elikim is, the way we're learning it, Elikim is higher than Avaya. It's not light, it's essence. I hate to use those words, but you like to use those words, so we'll use them. Right? It's not God the way He relates to the world, it's God as He is by Himself. Yevarcheinu Elikim, we get a bracha. A bracha means something we can internalize from Elikim, from Helam Ha'atzmi, from Hashem as He is by Himself, that Elikeinu, Hashem Himself is our God. He is ours, which means we experience Him. And I explained this to you last week. Last week we had a pretty long class. I explained this to you last week. What this means is, normally for something to be revealed, it has to go from point A to point B. There's a sun and there's an earth. The light travels the sun to the earth. But normally for something to be revealed, it has to be diminished. When a light goes from point A to point B, it's translated, it's modified, it's adapted to the point B. It's changed. There's one exception to that rule. And the exception to that rule is, if Hashem is revealed to us, not by shining a light, but if Hashem is revealing to us that we feel how we are one with Him. <coughs> right? How could they be Gilead Atmos? It's a contradiction in terms. Atmos means God as He is by Himself. Gilead means God as He relating to another. How could you reveal what's not revealable? Remember this was last week's class. How could you reveal the Eibishter who is beyond the whole concept of being revealed? And the answer is, if we find inside of ourselves where we're one with Him. And that's the meaning of these words. Yevachenu elekim. The godness of concealment gives us a bracha. Elekenu, that He becomes ours. Which means that we even experience the Eivishter as the Eivishter is by Himself. That's the title of these words. At least that's how we're learning it. Okay? That's the second bracha. And I'm reading the next pasuk. If you want to stop and question me, you're welcome to. Otherwise, I'm going to go continue moving. Yevarcheinu elikim, the godliness of concealment is going to give us a brach, another brach, a third brach. The first brach is Eretz Nasni Yevula. The second brach is Yevarcheinu elikim elikeinu, and the third brach is Yevarcheinu elikim, that the Eber, the God of concealment, is going to give us another bracha. And what is that bracha going to be? V'yiru oisei kol asiyaret, all the people in the world, till the Ephes to where the world is nothing, to where the world ends, to the very edge of the earth, are going to see a lekim. Meaning, that this bracha of a lekim being a lekeno, this bracha, that the godliness of concealment being something which is personalized to us, is not limited to us. But v'yiru oise, it's seen by kol of us, all the people in the world, until Ephes, until nothing, until, until there's nothing left, until there's nobody left over. So there's nothing beyond it, to the very edges of the earth. That's how you touch this person. Yevachenu elikim, the Ebesh is going to give us a bracha. The godliness of concealment is going to give us a bracha. The Yeru Aizai, that the Ebesh will be seen, call us to the edges of the earth. That every person, Yid and non Yid, is going to see elikim, the godliness of concealment. But of course, I can never leave anything simple, right? If I left something simple. I would lose my job, right? I'm sorry. There's a very, very big discussion in Hasidus. Based on a very, very big discussion in the Gemara on the word S, Aleph Tov. Right? Right, if it would say, but what would be missing? Nothing. If it said, V'ahavto, Hashem alakech, without S, no trouble. Right? S, Hashem alakech, Atira. All of these S's are extra. All of these S's are extra. All of Toth. So the Gemara says that the Tanoim, 
explained every single S. And the rule is, the rule is that the word S denotes tofel, something secondary. For example, so there's the heaven itself, and then there's S, what is secondary to Shemayim? What's secondary to Shemayim? The stars and the planets. There's Ha'arav, the temporary the earth, and the S includes people and animals and plants and minerals. You understand? So the S, the word S adds something else. But after S Hashem Alakach, you should love the Abishtad, and there's an S. S Hashem Alakach Atira, the Gemara says it's a controversial Gemara, but the end of it, S Hashem Alakach Atira, the Rabbis Talmidi Echachomim. It says Hashem Alakach Atira, you have to fear God. But because you have an S, it means you have to fear somebody else besides for God, and this goes on Talmidi Echachomim. The people who study Tater, Man Mal Kerabonit. You understand? But there's another, so that's why the word S is always understood to mean something extra. But in Hasidus they explain it different, a little. Not contradictory, but there's a different angle. Instead of saying that the word S means adding something secondary, it means that it makes the secondary bottle to the primary, it makes the secondary subservient to the primary. For example, it says there's two psukim. In Tilly, Yiru Es Hashem and Yiru Me Hashem. Y- Yiru Me Hashem, you should be afraid of Hashem. Yiru Es Hashem, afraid of Hashem. So in Chassidus it says that Yiru Me Hashem is Yiru Tata, the lower Yiru, and Yiru Es Hashem is the higher fear. Why? Because the S means that he who fears is completely bottled Hashem. And that's how we translate it. Ahafta Es Hashem Alekacha, you should love the God. You have to love Hashem in such a way that you are S. You are tuffel to Him. So it's a different read, it's a different translation. In the Gemara, the S adds something which is secondary. Chassidus, it says that he who is doing the act becomes secondary to the primary. So after S Hashem Alekecha, right, Yiru, S Hashem, Yiru S says that we fear Hashem in such a way that we become secondary to Him. Yeah. You're good. So now go back to the Pasuk. The last bracha that Elikim gives us, that v'yiru oisay, that we should see Hashem in such a way that we're s. The shayish of the word oisay is s. That we are completely secondary to Him. That in seeing Hashem, we become completely secondary to v'yiru oisay. The shayish of the word oisay is s. That we see Him, and in seeing Him, we become entirely separate to Him. Call out the others. <laughs> the word Afsay means Gonish, Nichiva, nothing. Call all the Gansa Gonish from the belt, the whole nothing of the world. Now, the translation that the, the Mepharshim bring is that till, the, till there's nothing left, till the edges of the earth. But you could try to cause that as a whole, how in the whole world is nothing. And call after that means that the whole world appreciates its nothingness against the Vayiru Oisai. You follow? Again, this is another thing that I talked about a lot. The word kol. We exploited the word kol in this painting a lot. Right? You do ha'am melekim, you do ha'amim. Kulam. Twice. Kulam. How did I translate the word kulam? How we're all different. And we all need each other. And if we can get together and not feel like one person is extra, one person is no good, but everybody sees how we need one another to be a whole, the year away, say, kol af sayaretz. That there's a state of oneness amongst the met great diversity within the Abishta's earth. That's the brach of it. Yevarchenu alikim. There's a final brach of Hashem alikim that reaches not just Yid but the whole creation. V'yiru I say we see Hashem in such a way that we become secondary to Him. Call after the others. The whole world as it's a collective. And like today, to finish on a Hasidic note, the Gansak Garnish from the wealth, the whole nothing of the world. I'll tell you a story about nothing. <laughs> By the way, nothing is not nothing at all. It's an awful lot. Yeah. In mathematics, they worry about the number zero. What kind of number is it? This week is Shavuos. I just mitvach. Sunday is Shavuos. Tomorrow is already Shabbos Magbala. You can take a haircut. You can make a chasan. You can listen to music. Wow. Yeah, why not? But you can listen to music for sure. I've been asking Shabbos Magbala. I'm doing these weddings tonight in the older halls in Quran Heights. Now. So the Tzamech Tzedek was a Rebbe, he was a big Rebbe. And he had many, many Chassidim. Menoga, Ochi Menoga Chassidim. He had many, many Chassidim. And among his Chassidim were very great people. 
big, big Rabbonim. Some of the biggest Rabbonim in Russia with some of the Sadduk Pesach, they couldn't come to the Rebbe. Tishle, they couldn't come to the Rebbe. Pesach, they couldn't come to the Rebbe. Tishle, they couldn't come to the Rebbe. Because they were busy with the Rabbonus. So they came Shvuz. So in Lubavitch, Shvuz is called Chag HaMatzis. Matzis is, Matzis is Pesach, yeah? But in Lubavitch, everything is upside down. The reason they called Shvuz Chag HaMatzis is because a Rav was called Mem Tzadik. Matz. Mem Tzadik is Rosh Hashanah. Moira Tzadik. A teacher of justice. A teacher who is righteous. So what Rav was called a Matz. Mem Tzadik is an abbreviation. So they're called Chag HaMatzis. All the Rabbanim came to the Rebbe for Shvuz. And by the Rebbe also, every year, I mean, even now, you'll see, walking through the nights, the Rabbanim from the whole world, they come to the Rebbe. In Tavshim Pei Beis, now they come to them from all over Beretz Yisrael, from other places. They come to be the Rebbe for Shvuz. But it's a Machtedek, they were G'deli Rabbanim, Greise Rabbanim, Big Rabbanim, Real Serious Rabbanim, Go'inim, but they told a Lomdim, who were Yeshu Mabidin, they had communities, congregations, cities. But when they came to the Tzamech Tzedek, they were all Chassidim. So imagine a Rav. In the old country, in Russia, they would call a Rav a Rebbe. Every Rav was the Rebbe. So the Rebbe would leave his town, Chfeisvas, Nikolaev, Kremenchov, these were big cities. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Peterburg, Moscow, yeah? or Neville. <laughs> Ashtetele, Neville. Neville. And they would leave to go to the Rebbe. So when they would leave, there would be a goodbye party, the whole community together. Their Rebbe, their local Rav. And a lot of the Chassidim who couldn't afford to travel to Lubavitch would give the Rebbe letters and pedianas that he should bring to Lubavitch for them. And he would bring it to the Tzad Machtzadik, and the Tzadik would read it. And if necessary, he would give answers, and the Rebbe would carry it back. So they would see him off, but covered God, he wore a beautiful coat with a nice scarf, a silk scarf, and a shalik, with a beautiful Nuchi Medan. And they walked him out of the town. In some cities that had a lot of cover that about him, they would un- disconnect the horses from the wagon. And the people would schlep the wagon. You understand? It was considered a big cover in the old country. Then instead of the horse schlepping, the people would schlep him. They'd bring him to the train station. And he would get on the train, and he would travel from wherever he lived to Lubavitch. And he had to change trains for states and big cities. There was no train station in Lubavitch. Lubavitch was no train station. The nearest stop was in a city called Rudnia, which was 11 Vyorst, 11 kilometers Berach, from the Bavish, 11 Vyorst. So he would get out of the train, and from Rudnia to Labavitch, he would take a, a wagon. But now the wagon driver was a Labavitch, a Labavitch Kutcher, a Labavitch taxi driver, a Labavitch Uber, a Labavitch wagon driver. The Lubavitch wagon drivers knew there's only one Rebbe, Adin Rebbe. So when all these secondary Rebbe's would show up in Lubavitch, what was the Shalom Aleichem? How did you know you came to Lubavitch? The, the train would stop, you would get up, they would all with your Shemayin Arov, looks like a dignified man, with a big cylinder and all the good things. The wagon driver rolls up to the train station and he doesn't even get out. Revel! Revel! He didn't say Rebbe or Rav, Revel! Get in! And the devil had to schlep his own bag and climb in. Covid was over. No, he had no respect. And Lubavitch, everybody's the same. And they would go on the bumpy roads with the wagons without shocks. And he would come to Lubavitch. He would find himself a place to stay. And in Lubavitch, all the things he would say, everyone would be cool. It's a machzedek. was very mechabed, the rabbi. All the rabbis were into Torah. Chabad rabbis, in principle, did not make fun of the Torah. Yidus of Gekent Lenin, Talmidei Chachamim were in Chabad very choshev, always. Even if they were not chassidim. And certainly they were chassidim. So that Tzamech Tzadik would come upon him, the Rabbanim. There was different things that he did. One of the things that the Tzamech Tzadik did was every Shuas, the Tzamech Tzadik made what was called a nigletish, a nigla table, where the Tzamech Tzadik didn't speak chassidus, he spoke lamdas, nigla, aloch. The nigla tish was exclusive for the Rabbanim. Shavuos, there could be thousands of guests. But there weren't thousands of Rabbanim. There were dozens of Rabbanim, scores of Rabbanim. And there would be a tish. They never said, repeat a tish. Just for the Rabbanim. The nigla tish was the milchik meal. The first day Shavuos, we eat milchiks. But there's different customs, right? We don't wash for the milchik meal. You make a mezenis. And then, of course, you bench. And then you wait a little bit of time. An hour is an hour. And then you wash and you eat fleshiks. 
the Milchaka meal was called the Niglatish. So all the Rabban came into the Rebbe's house. I understand. It's a Machzerik Rebbe's and prepared Milchaks. Whatever it was, blintzes, and whatever they ate. And the Rabban would sit around. And the Tzemach Tzedek would sit with them. They would eat together. And the Tzemach Tzedek would raise an issue on his own. He would raise an issue with Nigla. He would speak in Halacha and Nigla. And I'm sure there was some kind of a discussion. Sitting by the table were all the Rabbanim, the guests, and all the Tzemach Tzedek's children. Tzemach Tzedek's sons were very, very big Goinim. And most of them, or all of them, lived in Lubavitch. Most of them lived in Lubavitch. So when they, the Nigla Tish, they also sat in. And it was a very beautiful... For big, big so one year the Tzemach Tzedek took a glass and they had on the table all kinds of uh, spirits, alcohol, <laughs> intoxicating beverages. And he put into this cup a little bit of each type. A little whiskey and a little vodka and a little bourbon and a little... It was noxious. It was impossible. It was so bad. He made a concoction with different kinds of drinks that don't go together. You, you, you knock that down and your stomach is a... Is a <laughs> so he filled his glass to the brim and he turns to one of his sons. He says, drink it. <laughs> <laughs> now if the son didn't see what was in it, maybe he would have drunk it, but he just saw what his father did. He says, this is not for you. A person can't drink this. It's not possible. So he gets to another one of his sons. He drink it. And when he offered it to a bunch of people, then he ended and every enough said, I decline. At the end of the table was sitting a very chosh of a big rov. He was a big chosid. He was a big oivid. The middle of Rebbe said about him that he's one of the two chosidim that I got everything out of them that I expected. In Avoida, in Mit, in Ruchnis, in Avoida Sashem. His name was Abnote, Nun Tes Ayin. He was a rov in a city called Mal- Malstrietzne, something like that. Malstrietzne, uh, a five syllable Russian word which I can never pronounce. He was a rov, he was a Tamut Chacham, he passed Kajalis, but he was Yidu Davin, Yidu worked in his Midis. And the Nikini was his bit like, yeah, she had zero ego. You could run him over, he wouldn't even notice. He had no ego at all. He was a real chosid. So after the Tzemach Tzedek offers this drink to a bunch of the chosidim and nobody wants to touch it, so the Tzemach Tzedek says, Git is noten. Not is ayin. When I and his name say Hofchem, he spoke in Yiddish. He said to him, Give it to Note, Nun Tes that was his name. Note is Ayin. What does Ayin mean? Nothing. Not Ephes. Ayin is also a Madrigue. And Ayin can tolerate contradictions. So they sent the cup to the back of the table and they sold Note. The Rebbe said, You to drink it. Say so he drank it. What he did after, I don't know. So then the Chsidim said, You heard the Rebbe gave you a big compliment. <laughs> the Rebbe said that you're in the Madrigue of Ayin. So you know what his reaction was? Yeah, yeah, garnish, taka garnish. He's right, I'm taking nothing. <laughs> taka garnish. He didn't hear a compliment. Yeah, yeah, garnish. So you can touch the word out, say that way also. The whole garnish, the whole nothing of the world. You see, in Hasidus, you learn that when Hashem is revealed in the world, one of two things happens. Either the world shows itself to be nothing, or the world shows itself to be Hashem. But in either case, the world has something which is separate from the Ebesh is Ephes, is Ois. You understand? The whole world sees it until the world is Ephes. Garnished. Nothing. Ois. So I want to just say this. This is the end. We're doing this how many years? I don't know. Ten years. This is the end of the first step of Davening, which is called Beches HaShachar. In Yiddish, you call it Funfaren and Karbonis. Funfaren means what you say before Davening. And Karbanus means Karbanus. You read about the Karbanus. And you know, as I've told you so many times, that this entire stage is called the world of Asiya. Right? The next thing we're going to learn, which I'm going to leave for next year. I, I don't know how many more weeks we have, but I'm going to go back to the Chumash a little bit. How many weeks do we have left? Two? Two? I guess so. Yeah. Two. Okay. So I'm going back to Chumash. Remember Chumash? We used to learn the Kutisiris. I'm going to dedicate those two weeks to, to today, to Bay Sin. Why? Because we're holding. This and next week. This week and next week? Yeah. So you have only one week after today. Okay, whatever. I'll figure something out. I'll figure something out. I'm, 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 I'm leaving the Shem Yuchut for next year. 
That's my plan. Okay, you're welcome to come back. You're welcome to get married. You're welcome to have children. You're just not welcome to have not a good life. You should have a beautiful, healthy, successful life. With all the brachs of the Eibish, the Mamish, but take Nidav and Nigla. He could, if he wants. It could be perfect by everybody. Yeah, he has his head. Eibish is just too smart, Eibish. I don't know. And he keeps secrets. <laughs> he keeps secrets. He never tells us what he's thinking. So we don't understand. But we live, and we live with Simcho Batzlacha. Simcho Batum Levov. Okay, so anyway, so this whole section from Matoivu, or any Makabal, till now is Asir. In, 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 in understanding the first half, we're called Fun Forent, what's before Davening. Hadeni Makabal, Vani Berev Chastor Ove Visecho, Vani Svodcho Shamei Srotzen, Adoin Oilom, Vahi Achal, Oilom Yayodam. This is called Yiddish, Fun Forent, from before Davening. Then there's Karbanas, we read about the Karbanas. Then we read about Hoidu. Uh, this is the end of Asiya. Now we're going to move on up to Yitzhida. Which means everything is going to shift. How is it going to shift? To use the language of last week, this section is called Hoido'o, submission. The next section is called Halo, to praise, to illuminate, to shine the light of Hashem. We'll get to it, and we'll sit on it, and we'll wallow in it, and we'll exhaust ourselves, <laughs> and maybe we'll bore ourselves. But this is a whole new madrig. Now, what's the difference between Asiya and Yitzira? What's the difference in Kabbalah between Asiya and Yitzira? The difference is Asiya means you live in Hashem's world, and you cannot see Him. That's why the Gemara says that if you live in the world of Asiya, it's like you're worshiping idols and you're not doing an Aveda. You're worshipping idols, but it's not Naveda. If you're worshipping gods, it's an Aveda. <laughs> and if you're not, it's not Naveda, it's not worshipping idols. What's that? You live in a world of nature. Teva, nature. You don't see Yad Hashem, you don't see Hashem's hand. So it seems to you like the world is just running amok, that there's nobody in charge. There's Dindal, there's Dayan. So you, as much as you want to see the Abish, but you don't see him in your every day. That's a seer. What's your tzira? You see, there's not a world of miracles. But it's a world where you could see Hashgach Apratis. Where you could see Hashem's hand in nature. And that's the difference between what we're learning about until now, where we say, Moidani, we accept that Hashem is true. And we're going to be learning about from now, which is Hallelujah, 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 a hundred times. We're praising Hashem for seeing Him within nature. But, the way I taught this to you, and the way we learned it, is the last two pieces, Hashemelech Hashem, this trade, this year's learning. Hashemelech 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 And then now, the Masayach Maginis Miz Mishel, the Kim Yechaneinu, was this was the, the base Hamikdash of Asir. In, the, in Asir, there's a sanctuary, there's a holy place. And in the base Hamikdash, even of Asir, you could see Hashem. What was the difference between Hashem Melech and this? Hashem Melech, you see the Abish there using the Shem Havaya, light, the light of Hashem. In this paragraph, you're seeing Hashem using the name Alakim. And this is higher. Because Hashem means light, light comes from there to here. Alakim means Hashem is concealed, and in the concealment, you see Him. And in my opinion, this is why we finish with this. The reason we finished Pesukah de Zimah and Zech Beneginez is because the paragraph before was Adeshem Melech, Adeshem Malach, Adeshem Yimlech, V'hoi Adeshem Lamech al Kol Oretz. You see Shem Havahi, you see godliness in Asiyah. And in this Pedic, it's a Likim Yechanen Yivarcheinu, right? Yiducha Melikim, Yiducha Melikim, Elikim Yivarcheinu, Elikim Elikeinu, Yivarcheinu Elikim. It's all Shem Elikim. So that we just, so to speak, the deepest idea in Asiyah is that in the nature of a sea itself, you see the Yevish. And we're actually finished. Questions, or comments, or observations, or whatever you want. And I'll drink water. Okay, we're going to break. We're going to come back. I'm not prepared to give you another class on Siddhar, so we'll talk about Shuas. Okay? <laughs>